hello family. I am going to be recording on YouTube as well, just to make recording sure. Recording in progress. There you go. That, you know, this doesn't get taken down because I'm doing another energy update. I'm opening the space with you, anointing the space, cleansing the space. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot more uh, protection grids than you might have previously seen me do. Because of course, in these times, I feel that it's warranted. And instead of doing it before I come in, I thought I'd just do it with all of you. So cleansing the space, our auras, the energetic space, all of your spaces and bringing you in a beautiful white light of protection, protecting me, my words, my field, all of the energetic grids around me emanating from me allow my words, my voice, my message to go out to those who this resonates and let it just be invisible to those who are not in aligned and not open. Let's just bring in Archangel Michael, bring in protection for everyone involved in this and releasing any energies of sabotage, censorship, manipulation, attack, just releasing that into the earth for transmutation and allowing whatever is meant to come through right now for the collective so that it helps you to illuminate your way forward in the highest and best way to help you to prepare for anything that you might need to prepare for for it to empower you, to give you strength, courage, wisdom, and for you to take whatever resonates and to just leave everything else. Hey Molly. And with that, let's begin. So I don't want to set fire to my house. So what we're going to do with this is move it a little bit to the side. And I wanted to do an energy update um, about what I see coming up for the collective. I have my notes. And it's just going to be a stream of consciousness because that's kind of how I work. And I want to set a disclaimer that this is from my perspective, my channel, my understanding, my prism. And you should take what resonates with you and leave the rest. This is not meant to be something that I'm trying to convince you of or trying to prove to you. It's just awareness that I get given the current global situation where we are as a collective. And it's not meant to um, alienate people. It is meant to be inclusive. But obviously, straight up, I'm going to say I'm for Palestine, I'm for freeing Palestine. And that's the stance I'm taking. So if that's not you, then you can just move on. Um, not here to antagonize, but that's very much the stance that I have and that I am very firm in. So uh, as we start out, um, I'm going to talk about a few countries and what I see happening for some countries. Um, some of it I've been talking about for the last four years, and some are new that are dropping in as I see global events. So I wanna talk about, obviously, the United States to start with, the energy of the US, and um, very important coming in for this year is that the US is going to a 99%, the upcoming eclipse that's coming up is going to cover 99% of the United States, 99% of them will be able to see the eclipse. And this is very important because eclipses bring about fated changes. And either we go willingly or we're going to be pushed. And it's very important what happens in the United States for many reasons. Number one, it's the biggest economy in the world. It's got a lot of political influence as we've seen. It's also involved in a lot of wars uh, throughout history. It's currently one of the biggest imperial countries. 
Um, and it's got his fingers in many different, let's say, pouches. So what happens in the US is going to affect the rest of the world, but the US itself has its own karma. And I have said ages ago, this is a time of reckoning for the United States and the United Kingdom, which have been one of the biggest imperial countries, not the only ones obviously, but one of the biggest. And it's a time of reckoning. Another way to say that it's a time of rebalancing. And so I feel that the coming four years for the United States and the incoming, obviously, president of that country, um, it's going to be a pivotal time of huge change, upheaval, collapse. I'm not here to be doom and gloom. I'm just going to say it how I see it. Some is going to be positive. A lot is going to be negative, but it's I believe that everything that's happening in this time is for us, for our collective consciousness, because it is a time for a lot of, I call them sleepers, uh, to wake up. And everyone wakes up. Now, when I want to say wake up, it's basically to see through the mirage, the propaganda, the false grids, the false narratives that were basically... Uh, controlled by. And a lot of this is now falling apart. So for the United States, I don't know exactly about timelines, but I don't see the United States as being the United States. Definitely for much longer. Now, much longer, that can mean anything. It, I believe the process starts now of the disintegration of the United States. And I believe pivotal to that is Texas. Uh, Texas is going to feel this e upcoming eclipse intensely. You can just Google when that is. Um, and we're already seeing evidence of that. So just Google Texas, see all the things that are happening in Texas, what's coming up in Texas. Um, a lot of the Republican Southern states are, I believe, going to secede. So I don't believe the union is going to hold. I can't tell you when that's going to happen, but I can say it's beginning now. Um, the same thing is true of the United Kingdom. Um, I don't believe it's going to remain united. Um, and one of the first that I see gaining independence is the nation of Scotland. And Scotland has its own wealth, obviously own distinct culture. And the way that the Scots think is very different from how they're being represented in Parliament. And um, that's very clear with what just happened with the SNP and how, uh, you know, the Speaker of the House dealt with the day of the SNP with regard to the war in Palestine. So if you don't know about that, you can look it up. But it's just to say that there are lots of cracks happening in the union that have been happening for a while. But I believe that the desire and the demand for Scottish independence will just increase over time. And Again, I can't tell you about timelines, but it's it's already in the works. I also believe Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are going to unite. So I do believe that Northern Ireland is going to secede from the Union. Um, and again, that is just obvious given the fact that <laughs> Northern Ireland is um, part of the United Kingdom, which had Brexit and the Republic of Ireland is still part of the EU. And it seems like this reunification of the country, it feels like it's only just time. It feels appropriate. And again, I do believe that that's going to, it's in the works. Um, and as a more general statement, it's time of the collapse 
of empire. And empire meaning the old colonial empires and the countries that have been involved in imperialism for the last hundreds of years. So most of Europe uh, and the United Kingdom uh, obviously is a part of that. And in the 20th century, definitely American imperialism. And that is coming now to an end. So the time of imperialism in, in all its forms, economic, direct, people think that imperialism is dead. Actually, our current capitalist um, structures and especially late stage capitalism is showing all of the ways that late stage capitalism is actually uh, not only corrupt, not only does it not work, but it creates more inequality between the haves and have nots, the 1% that actually rule the roost, and even above the 1%, um, the globalists, the elite, the cabal, whatever you want to call it, it's not even a conspiracy anymore. Um, all of that is crumbling. And what does that actually mean? That if we don't even have imperialism now, what does imperialism, imperialism in current day society look like? It looks like economic control. It looks like international institutions, especially that are supranational and very multinational that sometimes are bigger than the GDPs of entire countries. Um, they do economic imperialism and economics, money, control, power, which are all kind of part of the same thing. Money wields power, wields control, which leads to dominance. And how does this dominance play out in economic terms, in influence, in cultural, socioeconomic terms. So things like the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, the ICJ, um, multilateral institutions, NATO, Davos, all of these supranational, multinational organizations that are really puppets of the powerful that are actually forms of direct or indirect, very covert control over economies, over people, over the legal legislative structure of any country. Those I believe are going to collapse. We're already seeing with a war in Palestine, how the United Nations is impotent, how they have allowed basically successive violations of not only human rights, but United Nations Security Council resolutions since 1948. And we've seen how the structure of the United Nations, the veto power, and let's get it clear that the five permanent members of the United Nations, the, the UK, the US, um, China, Russia, there's one more, could be France, um, they have the right to stop and scupper any resolution, which the United States has done already three times in the, in the Palestine war as we speak now, which is the beginning of March, 2024. And that is paralyzing it. And we actually see how inefficient the structures are. Something that was built post-World War II, which is basically created by the victors, how that is completely imbalanced in the world that we're in today. And this imbalance and these injustices, which are just so obvious for the whole world to see, those are not going to be able to continue because too many people in the world, when I'm talking about people, I'm talking about the common person, the citizens of a country, overwhelmingly, let's talk about Palestine, for, for example, because it's bringing up a lot of this. Palestine is actually bringing up a lot of the collective unconsciousness, how much collective healing still has to be done, where uh, current unaliving genocide of a whole nation is literally being allowed in plain sight while it's happening on our social medias. Uh, that's being allowed, aided and abetted by 
the biggest imperialist countries, biggest one being the United States. So while it's dropping bombs, it's pretending to support the international framework of international humanitarian law, the laws of war, all of which have been thrown out in the case of it's not real. That's the country I'm talking about. I'm going to use that as a synonym for the country. No, that I'm not going to mention too much because it's going to get flagged. That country is going to be known as it's not real. So in fact, so we've spoken about the US, we've spoken about the UK, the ways that imperialism is still very much alive and well. Uh, you can call it neo-colonialism, basically domination of mostly white people over the rest of the world. Um, and, you know, that goes into other things like white supremacy, racial theory. We don't have time to get into that, but I will get into that at some point because it's very, very relevant. Um, that is basically showing cracks. People are seeing through it. And the citizens of at least the countries, even if the governments are not reflecting the will of the citizens, the citizens are trying to make their will, their desires be felt out on the streets. And this is what brings me to the next countries or a bunch of countries that I want to speak about, and that's Europe. Um, I don't believe Europe is going to sustain as one entity either. Um, it's not viable. We're seeing cracks in that already. Um, a lot of the structures um, and the systems in place uh, are not able to have cohesion. Um, there isn't one real voice. We've already seen that with Macron saying he's going to send uh, troops into Russia, Germany saying no, they're not. Uh, and more than that, the economies of the Western European bloc are hugely different. It's very difficult for each economy and each government to manage their economics, their economic situation without the ability of having independence from this supranational authority, which is the European Union. And a lot of the European Union officials are not elected by the people. So is it really democratic? No, it's not. A common thread through all of this late stage imperialism, late stage capitalism is also going to bring up the whole subject of democracy. Are we actually living in a democracy when, for example, in France and even in the UK, they're talking about these rules now that you're going to have to perhaps apply to protest. You can't just protest as a given right, which has always been the case previously. So we're going to see increasingly our freedoms, freedom of speech, of expression, of the written word, journalism, all of that is being curbed in a very dictatorial, tyrannical way. Now, the sleepers will not get this, but I'm not speaking to the sleepers. And if you're watching this, you are probably not a sleeper because you wouldn't come to my to my live, my page. You wouldn't won't resonate with my words. So I'm not going to talk to people who need convincing. I'm talking to the people who are already here, who can already see this. So I don't believe that Europe is going to sustain. I believe the European Union is going to break up straight up. I'm just going to call it. Again, I can't tell you in terms of timelines, but the cracks are already happening. Uh, the country, um, well, China, let's talk about China. Um, there's a lot of talk about China and Taiwan. I do believe that there's going to be attempts at reunification. I'm not going to say whether I think that's good or bad. I'm just going to say what I believe is going to happen. Um, I think increasingly with countries acting with impunity after seeing the way the country it's not real has carried on and the way the United States has just given blanket support to pretty much um, a rogue state, other countries are going to see the basically in action of the global community, kind of like the League of Nations uh, after around World War One, which led to World War Two, um, 
how basically inefficient and ineffective it was. Countries are just gonna take matters into their own hands. And China's freaking powerful. So I don't believe that the United States has the financial, economic, military means to face China. What does that mean for Taiwan? I do believe at some point it's going to be taken over. I'm hoping it's done in a peaceful way. Um, again, I can't talk about exactly when this is going to happen, but it kind of feels like soonish. Uh, that's not weeks. It's, I would say, within a couple of years. But again, my timing can be off. But I do believe that that's where we're going. Um, in terms of the country, it's not real. And what they're doing in Palestine. And again, I'm not saying this is what I want or don't want. I'm just going to say what I believe is going to happen. Um, I don't believe that it's going to be able to sustain itself as an ethno state as it currently is. I do believe that there will be a Palestine and the settlers who are currently there will have the right to be part of a democratic Palestine. Um, and I believe it's happened with what? I believe the last, the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back, let's say, was what happened in October. Now, I don't believe it's correct to target any civilians, but again, I've changed my stance on what I believe um, is correct with what happened there. And I do believe that what they call Hamas right now, I don't actually see it as um, a terrorist organization. I do believe they're freedom fighters because the oppression that they've been under, the Palestinian people have been under for over 75 years, over 100 years, if you actually talk about what happened since the late 1800s, because that's how long it's been happening. That's, if you go even further back to the Balfour Declaration and look into the historical documentation of how the United Kingdom was making deals with Zionists at that point to hand over Palestine. Um, you could say that the Palestinians have been fighting for over a hundred years for their land. And so I do believe there's going to be a time of reckoning. I believe Israel has made itself more insecure with waging this completely unholy and totally inadmissible war. And the world, I feel, is waking up. And what Palestine has really crystallized is all of the fights that the global south has been sustaining against the imperialists four years, it's brought up into um, focus what's happening in Congo, what's been happening in Sudan, um, which basically no one was speaking about until, at least for me, I was aware of the gravity and depth of the imperialism that Palestine has been going through. So Palestine has basically for myself opened up my mind to the other struggles for freedom and how, at least in the case of Congo and look into that, um, how economic imperialism has impoverished and killed and exploited the people of Congo. Um, so I do believe there's a rise of the global south. We can see that with BRICS nations and how BRICS has been expanded, how, how I believe BRICS is going to be the counterbalance to US imperialism, Western imperialism. And I'm also going to, um, I'm not going to speak about it a bit later, but I'm also going to call out the collapse of the US dollar. I don't believe it's going to be the currency, uh, the global currency of reserve. And we're going to go into that a little bit later, but I do believe that BRICS and the rise of BRICS is going to be very important as we see the collapse of the hegemony of the US dollar. And 
We're going to go into a little bit the economics a little bit later, but I just want to bring that out at this point when we're talking about the rise of the global south, the expansion of BRICS, with um, also the vilification of China and Russia. It's very easy to vilify China and Russia. Uh, and when, you know, the, the, let's say the Western yardstick of democracy, of development, we're now seeing how that's collapsing in front of our eyes and how hypocritical at least the United States has been and how, um, how they've actually, the United States and actually the organization with the three letter word starting with C ending in a, um, how that institution has really been instrumental in the overthrows and the instability of so many governments in the global south since the end of the Second World War, and um, how the United States has caused so much destruction um, in the name of democracy and freedom and how they are looking so hypocritical now when they're blaming China and Russia because they don't actually have a moral leg to stand on. So I just wanted to bring that point up. We're also going to talk about now freedoms, right? And the erosion of freedoms in late stage, let's say capitalist societies, which I'm living in, which a lot of people are living in, the whole Western model of development. And we're seeing that that's just not working. We're seeing inequality rise. Um, we're seeing, and actually you should go look out, uh, look at Gary Stevenson. He share, he's an amazing economist, former trader. Uh, he has a channel on YouTube and he has exactly the views I have on global economics, definitely UK economy. European economy, which is going down the chute. This is not pessimistic. This is just what is happening unless we take action. And um, what does this actually mean that the economy is going down the chute? It means the rich are getting richer. It means the poor are getting poorer. It means that at the time of COVID, and I actually talked about this in 2020, when all the countries started printing money in order to put the shop thing into your arm and also to um, keep people followed, uh, keep the economies going when people were forced to be at home, um, they were printing money. That's creating debt based on nothing, right? Because uh, the US dollar and a lot of the current cu global currencies are not pegged to gold like they used to be. Uh, they're free floating and it's based mainly on the faith in the United States to pay back its debt, right? And as more and more countries have got more and more indebted, especially since printing billions during COVID, keeping people at home, which is part of a gen, which is part of an, of an agenda, um, to basically collapse economies. And what happens when economies collapse? And who are the beneficiaries of that debt? It's the rich, it's the banks, it's the asset managers, it's the big families who are basically on the other side of the trade. Because when you print money, right, you're in debt. And who's buying that debt? Think about that. It's just not going into thin air. So that debt has to be paid, but someone is going to be a net beneficiary of all that money. And it's these big institutions, the Black Rocks, the big asset managers, the vanguards, the JP Morgan, the chases of the world the big banks, um, and I do believe as more banks fail, which they will because of fractional reserve, at least in the US, going to zero. And the, the reason I speak about the US is because it's the biggest economy, the biggest banking system. And what it means when the fractional reserve has gone to zero means they don't have to keep any money in reserve uh, when they're taking your money. So what happens when you give money to a bank 
they then lend it out. And usually they were supposed to keep a proportion of that. We even got down to a 10 to 15% at some point. I think right before COVID, it went to zero. And which is why if there's a loss of faith in a bank and everyone goes to call money and try to get their money out at the same time, that bank will collapse because they don't actually hold that money. That's why actually you're seeing more and more cashless society because what does money actually mean? It's just numbers on a screen. There's nothing there like gold to back it. So I do believe there's going to be more banking failures and there's going to be more consolidation of the banking industry, which is actually, number one, not only is it monopoly, uh, antitrust, but also go have a look at who actually owns these banks. It's going to be a handful of four or five recurring names of which BlackRock, JP Morgan, Vanguard, State Street. You're going to see these names coming up a lot. Um, I encourage you to do your research. It's easier to control when there's maybe four or five big players. So look out for a consolidation of the banking industry as we move to the globalist agenda of having a cashless society. We already are hearing about central bank digital currencies and I'm hoping that doesn't happen but we're on the we're on the march towards that why do I want that to not happen because uh, as is currently already being done in China um, your bank and control of your bank and if it's you have a central bank digital currency that can be linked to a social credit score, which means if you don't behave and do what the state tells you to, if you are banned on Instagram meta um, social networks, if you speak about things that the government and the powers that be don't want you to, if you're anti their propaganda, they can just stop your money just like that. If you're not a good citizen, they can stop the way for you to sustain yourself. So that can be linked to carbon credits, that can be linked to where, how you spend your money. So it's really not something that you wanna do just because you think something might get more efficient. And some people even go so far as putting chips into their arms to pay. Like for me, that's horror. Uh, but it's already like there's an Amazon chip I saw on some <laughs> Instagram post of how this chick was playing, paying for her stuff on Amazon by like floating her arm in front of the cash machine. That's horror for me. And on the same theme of a restriction of freedom of which central bank and digital currency is a part of which mo monopolies of our banking system, consolidation of the banking system is a part because smaller means more control. Um, we have things known as 15 minute cities where they can limit how far you can actually move. We've seen that starting to be introduced with at least in Europe, so France, Spain, that's already happened, where for short journeys, I think it's under an hour, you're forced to take the train like before you could you could fly right um and given train uh prices right now it's prohibitive for people to actually move short distance um and if they don't have a car which we're going to come to um if they can't fly now usually it should be a sovereign individual choice and not up to the government and they bring in carbon credits, the, the environment, as a way to save the environment. Well, if you're really worried about the environment, um, have you seen the bombing? Have you seen the military industrial complex and the pollution that that has in the world? Have you seen the mining of copper have you seen the all the mines all the basically western society has been built on 
the economy. And with the rise of the global south, one way to curb development is to put in these economic tariffs to save the economy. Now, I can't get into the economic, the environmental rabbit hole right now, but I'm telling you, it is a rabbit hole. Um, so airplanes to trains, 15 minute cities limiting how much people can actually move out of where they reside. So stopping freedom of movement, um, look up agenda 2030, uh, look how Klaus Schwab and his view for the world. Uh, that's an even evil man, by the way. Um, and the whole notion of free speech and the First Amendment in the United States, it's on its way out unless we take action, unless we stop them. I'm going to talk about some of that later on. But you've seen a rise of protests globally. And this year, two thirds of the world is having elections. This is going to be very important because more and more people are going to see that there's actually not a lot of point for elections because a lot of the time there's a two party system and they're both actually saying the same thing because they're owned by the same people. And many of the leaders of the countries definitely in the West are installed. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, this whole Trump thing, Trump is going to save you. I do believe Trump is actually going to come to power unless he's unalived. I spoke about that actually in 2000 um, with a fear that he might be unalived. It's not something that I want. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Um, but I do believe there's a danger of that. And I, I, I thought it was going to happen four years ago. But that theme is still very present. Um, I spoke about institutions like the WHO with a globalist agenda. Um, I do believe that they're going to lose, crumble, lose power because people can just see through how corrupt they are. Um, and also this the newest treaty that they're trying to push through for yet more vaccine and medical or medical control over government. So again, it's not voted by the people of these governments. It's a supranational authority that is dictating what governments and that therefore people, what it's legal for people to do and not do with their own medical and body sovereignty. So for me, that's a huge no. Um, we have seen an increase in polarity. Uh, and that has always been the case because it's a tool of imperialism to divide and conquer. But this tactics of division and also inequality, which is polarity, the, the have versus have nots, which are is just increasing over time. This is a tactic of um, divide and control by the imperialists, which are currently the globalist cabal shadow government. You can call it whatever you want, but it exists. Um, and playing into that are things known as race relations. That is actually a theory, by the way. Look into that. Look into what being white actually is. Um, I don't have time to get into that right now, but I would urge you to look into that. And um, the clash of the global south, which is having more weight now, um, to old patriarchal imperialist systems of control and what happens when the imperialists are losing control they try whatever they can to hold on to it and that's why we're seeing so much chaos war division uh, social unrest protest um and i believe dislocation seismic dislocations happening right now because they're losing their grip on control. And so they're trying everything they can to reinforce their control with propaganda, with division, with blocking your money, not allowing you to move anywhere, uh, taking away your body sovereignty. There's so many different ways that this plays out, but the basic line is division. 
division, sowing discord um, within people so that they're easier to be controlled. Because when we're divided, we can be controlled. When we're fighting amongst ourselves, it's easier to be controlled. So um, this is all part of the collapse of empire that I had spoken about earlier. Let's talk a little bit more about economics now. Um, I've got a lot of notes. I might have to do a second live because it might be getting a little bit long, but we've spoken about how imperialism is coming down. There's going to be a collapse of the US dollar. Um, a lot of countries are already in re recession. And again, I would urge you to go and look at Gary Stevenson again. Look at his YouTube, how he talks about us pretty much being in a recession, but the news is not reflecting that. And he says you can watch business news, economic news for entertainment, but that doesn't actually tell you about the state of your economy. So you can see, for example, in the US, the indices going up. Everyone says, oh, yeah, everything is good. But actually, if you spoke, speak to the person on the street, do they have food? Can they pay their bills? Can they pay their mortgages? Are their basic needs of survival, are they being covered? And in many instances, it will be no. So the baby boomers and the increasing levels of wealth and living standards that happened since the baby boomers, the millennials, and since the millennials, that has just been eroded. Now for young people to get, let's say, onto the housing ladder is pretty much impossible unless you're part of the elite. And that is by design. So as the, the rich keep increasing their money, what are they going to do with that money? They're going to be buying the assets of the people that are getting foreclosed, that are losing their homes, that can no longer pay out their mortgage payments because of interest rates rising. So keep that in mind because wherever they're sellers, they're buyers, but the buyers are always the same people. And that again, increases the inequality be between the haves and the have nots. So we've spoken about the collapse of the dollar. We've been sp speaking about social unrest, the housing situation. Um, and at the same time as we're having social economic unrest in most of the countries of the world, countries, the imperialist countries, the United States, um, the UK, France, they're funding wars and they're going to continue funding wars. And as a lot of you will know, a lot of the globalists fund both sides of the wars. So they gain no matter what. The military industrial complex gains from war. So you might see a lot of the indices going up, especially the indices that are catering to the war machine, the propaganda machine, the government machine, those might be going up but everything else is going to be suffering. And another thing that this economist Gary Stevenson said is that if you look at, so number one, speak to the person on the street to know what's actually happening in economies rather than looking at the people on the news spewing entertainment for um, covering economics. He said also the economic professors and the academ academics who a lot of the time come to speak on these shows, let's say, they're working with very old paradigms um, and they're not in touch with the reality on the street. So they're looking at formulas that are actually based on a very small cross section of society when there was not such huge disparity in wealth. So what they're currently saying and their current predictions are completely outdated and wrong. And what he said is, look at what's actually happening on the trading floor. He's a former trader, he's making a lot of money, and unfortunately he's betting on the economies of most of the world going down and he's making millions on it. So again, don't look at what you're watching on the news, look at what's actually happening on the ground and you're gonna see greater unrest, social unrest, people losing their homes, uh, food supply, I've spoken about that. The farmers who are talking about 
their livestock, their produce, how they're not getting fair um, money for it, and also how a lot of it is being buyed up, bought up by, um, let's say, multinational globalist foundations. Uh, that rabbit hole I have to get into at another time. But it also has an impact on food hygiene, food supply. I'll give you a case in point. For example, France, which is part of the European Union, very high stringent uh, food hygiene and control regulations. Um, a lot of farmers here have been protesting because they've been getting food in from Ukraine, which don't have the same stringent controls, eggs, for example. And the farmers in France, for example, have been losing out. So that's just one example of how they're messing with our food supply. Okay, um, we've said that this is election year, the fallacy of elections, how two thirds of the world is voting this year. That's why it's a seismic year, especially from April onwards. Expect to see more chaos more change, more revelations. I'm not even going to talk about disclosure yet. Um, but basically the illusion of the two party system that's over. And there's also, again, arguments of like straw man theory and the like about if we actually vote, we're handing our power over. So please go do some of your own research on that. Um, I would never have called myself an anarchist, but I definitely don't agree with the current election system that most countries have because I don't believe it's the people actually voting and I don't believe that they're actually having a say. And also, I believe any elected official should be reviewed every year. It shouldn't be four years, five years, even longer, because there's they can do anything in that time. And if they have to answer to the electorate at the end of each year, they're going to work a lot harder to stay aligned with what the electorate actually wants. So I do believe there has to be reform of the electoral system uh, in general. Um, and then what are some of the prescriptions? So speaking up, spreading awareness, um, saying no. I do believe going forward because there's so much sovereign, so country government debt, and there's so much personal debt. At some point, that's not sustainable. And I do believe that it has to be debt relief. This debt is going to have to be forgiven, just written off. And that started actually in the US already, where some students have just stopped paying their student loans. So I believe that's already starting because debt, honestly, it's a form of slavery. I got into that in my wealth consciousness transmission where usury, um, it's an old system of lending, uh, how you can actually never pay it back. And we get into this vicious cycle of constantly being a slave to the debt system, which is actually a form of slavery. Um, other prescriptions with, with the rise of propaganda, uh, with the rise of um, more control on freedom ex of expression is the people being the journalists. So actually, social media is going to be one, and I do believe there's going to be more people-powered social media, social networks, networks in general, that are not um, dominated by big tech, which are, again, just systems of control of shadow governments, governments, the elite, because if you if the, they don't like what you say, they can shut you down. Well, that's not freedom of speech. Forget about the mainstream media. That is over. You do not get the truth from there. So I do believe there's going to be a, a rise of independent media and people powered media and journalists on the ground, as we're actually seeing in Palestine, where we can actually see from the people who are going through these horrors, which act, what is actually happening and what's been reported by the mainstream is literally 360 degrees different. So I stopped believing anything in the media. In fact, I would do opposite what the media says in terms of believing it and in terms of my economic stance of actually what's happening in the world. If they're telling you something, I would usually believe the opposite. 
and never has that been true than in this time. So I do believe journalism is going to be decentralized and that is a good thing. Um, history has been written by the victors, which is why there has been a lot of whitewashing of history. Um, the history, as you've seen in a lot of the history books, including the history that I studied, I studied IR and economics at university. I've had to go away and unlearn a lot of that. Some, one of the base theories that I learned at university in strategic aspects of international relations, there's this big guy called Samuel Huntington. Some of you might have heard of him. He wrote The Clash of Civilizations. And I'd urge you to go watch the critique of Samuel Huntington by Edward Said. It's fascinating. But in a nutshell, Samuel Huntington basically said there's going to be a clash of civilizations. This was already 20 years ago that I read this book. Um, and did my uh, my thesis on it, that the class of civilizations is going to be around identity, politics, religion, Islam versus the West, right? And that is couldn't be further from the truth because, as Edward Said argues, it ignores economic exploitation, imperialism, and uh, the fact that there's been white supremacy and domination of countries. So it's not a, a, a down to identity politics. Um, it's actually down to exploitation and control. So I would urge you to go into that and look at alternative theories of you, what you might have learned in university or were told, because if you understand that history was written by the victors, think about where you grew up what slump that has in the world, and then see if there's an alternative to that particular analysis or theory that you can get. Because you might find, like I found when this war in October took off, that actually I had no freaking clue what was actually happening in the Middle East because I was completely whitewashed and my understanding of the situation was completely from a Western perspective, not actually from the people on the ground. Um, so to recap for today, uh, cause I've been going quite a while already. I'm going to do another one of these cause there's so much to say about the coming times, but we're going to come into an eclipse. The U S eclipse season, the U S is going to be hugely, um, important, significant in this time. Look up for more upheaval. That doesn't mean you need to freak out. That means you need to know what's coming up and prepare be aware. And when you know what's coming up, you can't be scared because you know it's happening. You can prepare. You can um, take off the rose colored glasses, stop <laughs> listening to the Kool-Aid of the propaganda machine of the state and start thinking critically for yourself because that's going to help you make better decisions for your life. Um, I don't believe, I mean, I never thought Joe Biden was actually running the, the country anyway, but I somehow don't see him finish his term. I don't, I believe Kamala Harris might come in again. I can be wrong about this, but I'm just going to call it. I don't believe he's going to last very long. Uh, and somehow, I, and we've already seen Kamala Harris, sh Harris show up last week. Again, it's elect election time. So we take that with a sack of salt. But I believe you're going to be seeing how more and you're going to be seeing a retreat of Biden. Um, and so that's happening in the collective. On a more personal level, how does all of this happening in the collective reflect you, uh, reflect in your life and what might show up in your life as we're purging old, outdated systems, structures, uh, forms of control on the outside? We're going to have to deal with that internally as well in relationships and family structures in friendships in um, clients in how we run our life in what is even important to us our values and there's going to be a purging of these relationships there's going to be a purging of situations that literally have not been serving you that have been sucking you of your life force outdated sometimes relationships that have run their course, but you're just hanging on from inertia and because you're afraid. 
So look at where in your personal life you've grown out of certain situations, family dynamics, relationship dynamics that no longer serve you. And anything that was based on lies, domination, control, um, where you couldn't express yourself, I believe those are either going to be taken away from you or they're going to or you're going to be proactively involved in changing them or walking away from them. I've seen that in my personal life. It started to happen with relationships um, at the end of October with the war, and it's continued and much closer to home uh, with purging, upgrading, and really seeing a situation for what it is and not what you thought it should be or was. So this is really getting clarity on a situation and your particular role in it. Um, it's also going to be an exit point for many souls who are going to leave the planet, leave this life, whose contract, whose soul contract is over at this time. Um, some of that, a lot of that is going to be linked to the sharp thing. We haven't even seen the effects of that coming through. Some of us have and all of that, um, let's say disclosure, you haven't even seen most of it because the MSM has not reported on it. But if you literally scratch beneath the surface, you're going to see all of that being uncovered. And unfortunately, um, yeah, it is going to have effect on the population. Also be aware of savior energy, martyr energy, where you're trying to save people, situations that actually it's not your role to save and you're going to expend a lot of life force holding on to something that is over. Trying to save people from, let's say, their soul contract uh, just because you see something happen and they don't and they don't want to participate, you're going to realize that your life force energy, you need to pull it back and you need to respect people's choices. And this is what I mean about relationships and situations changing because it's not your job to save people. You have to respect and allow each soul their own path. And it's very difficult. I've experienced that myself. We cannot save other people from their karma unless they want that. That is a huge theme going forward. So just like you have country karma, you have collective karma, you have family karma, relationship karma, your own karma. So as within, so without, literally, I'm all tablets in case you want to get into that. Um, and finally, we're going to talk about having a lot of tolerance for your nervous system, a lot of care for your nervous system, your psyche, your soul, your mental situation, because the times that are coming are really hectic. And sometimes it's going to be hard to discern what the real truth is, but it will come to you. If you set the intention that show me the truth here, what am I missing? What shadows should I be um, looking at now so that I can actually get to the truth of the situation? you will be shown. You'll get a message, um, something will pop up uh, on your screen, on your phone, an article, a meme. You will receive the message if you are open to guidance. That guidance is always available. If something gets too much, learn to go back into nature, come back into your body. A lot of times the patriarchal system is trying to get us out of our bodies, uh, trying to get us into the mind, and the mind is fine, but if you've lost touch with your body, you can't actually materialize anything and you're not actually a whole human if you're just living in your mind. So a lot of Western therapy is very much in the mind. It's very individual focused, not looking at the collective and the collective mal is that is showing up in that in our world. And a lot of that has to do with disconnection from self, intuition, body, mother, earth. Look at the way the bombing is destroying Palestine. So all the environmentalists who are talking about saving the world and are not speaking up about what's happening in Palestine, I'm just gonna leave you with that. So uh, disengage from the media when it's getting too much. You can still be witness 
So for me, I want to bear witness to what's happening in Palestine, um, for example, and I have grief every day about that situation, but I also know it's important for me to disconnect from it from time to time, especially social media, especially the media, because by you losing access to your foundation, your inner strength, you can't help the collective. So take care of yourself so that you can take care of the collective. Intentionally take breaks from the barrage of information that you're always getting so that you can actually hear your inner voice. And hearing your inner voice, having your own sovereignty, knowing when to trust yourself, when to trust information that you're getting from the outside, that is going to save your life. And I don't say this lightly, that's gonna save your life in the times that we're getting into. And finally, don't try to convince people of your perspective. Don't try, again, again, this is savior complex. Don't try to save people don't try to wake people up. That's also arrogance. I had to learn this myself. The people who are ready, who are at on your frequency, who are ready to see the world for what it is, um, they're gonna be on board. And those are the people that you should align with because going forward, community and fostering community and learning to rely on your neighbor um, and fostering these community ties that we're not in this individually, we're in this together. Because this is a collective malaise right now. That's why we've all in, 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 um, come into this world with a soul contract to come in at this time uh, because we have a role to play in the collective awakening of humanity and literally in the emancipation of humanity. So on that note, that's where I'm going to end. Um, hope this has been entertaining. I'd love to know what you think about this. Um, drop into my DMs. Um, feel free to drop notes down here. Let's continue this dialogue going. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about um, generational trauma and ancestral healing because I'm going to be offering something with a friend coming up in a few weeks. It's going to be fabulous. But in this time, it's going to be very important to look at your shadows, look at the world the way it is, be very clear of what's happening so that you can take proper sovereign choices so that you can come out of this, we can come out of this stronger. Love you and I'll see you soon.